Hi everyone, hope you all are doing good. Today we are going to study about the cleidocranial dysplasia. So this is how a normal collarbone looks like and this is what you see in cleidocranial dysplasia. So it could be partly missing collarbone which could be seen and also skull deformities could be seen. Moving ahead, what is the definition of cleidocranial dysplasia in particular? It is a congenital disorder of bone where formation is manifested with clavicular hypoplasia or agenesis. Either it could be half, it could be partial or it could be completely absent, the collarbone, with a narrow thorax making approximation of shoulders in front of the chest as much as possible. So further I will be showing you some pictures also which will be defining this definition. In short you can see that it is a congenital disorder where your collarbone is mainly missing. Now cledo here is for the collarbone, cranial is usually the uh, skull region. So either it is small form or it could be completely absent. Moving ahead to the etiology, usually the mutation in the core binding factor alpha 1 Gene could be one such thing that is usually located on chromosome number 6P21 could cause this particular disorder or maybe any familiar disorder that is transmitted as an autosomal dominant trait could be the possible etiological factor. Moving to some of the clinical features, what do you see here in this disorder is, see there will be abnormalities of skull that can be involving the teeth, jaws, and at the same time the shoulder girdle. So first what are the skull abnormalities that will be seen? The fontanelles or sutures are remained open. So usually at the time of birth, at the time of delivery of the child, these sutures are going to close. Okay, The sutures that we have, they close. But here in this particular condition where the where person is or the baby is suffering from cleidocranial dysplasia, the sutures will remain open. Sagittal suture characteristically is sunken frontal, parietal, occipital bones are going to be prominent in the baby. Paranasal sinuses are usually underdeveloped and they could be narrow. Also, there would be characteristically Arnold head that would be seen. Further in the picture, you could see how the Arnold head looks like. There is an abnormality in the shape of the skull. Also, you can see in the shoulder girdle, there is no collarbone formation. If there is collarbone formation, hota, the shoulders would have been normal like this. Okay, But here you see that the shoulder girdles or the collarbone here is missing or absent due to which this is how the baby looks like. The shoulder girdle is absent. So, partial or, abs partial or complete absence of the clavicles or thinning clavicles leading to an unusual mobility of the shoulders. Do you Can you do this thing in normal conditions? We cannot do like this because we have completely formed collarbones. But here in the child, the uh, collarbones or the clavicles are not formed that lead to this particular problem. Now what are the other clinical features that could be seen? There could be defect in the vertebral column, the pelvis or the long bones of the body. Once thought to affect only the membranous bones, but now it is recognized that it can also involve the other part of the skeleton. So not only the membranous bones, but entire skeleton could be affected. Moving ahead to some of the oral manifestations, high narrow arch palate or cleft palate could be seen. There could be underdeveloped maxilla, that means the maxilla or the mandible are not usually perfectly developed in size. Either the mandibles could be enlarged or the maxilla could be underdeveloped. That could also lead to a cleft palate. Prolonged retention of the deciduous teeth, that means that the deciduous teeth are not falling off on time when they were supposed to fall off. Okay. Next thing here is that there could be subsequent delay in eruption of the succedinous teeth. So both the things are happening here if you see. What both things are happening? First thing that the existing dentition, deciduous dentition will fall lately. Secondly, there will be delay in eruption which will happen. Okay. Now roots of the teeth are usually shorter and thinner in such patients. Absence or Posit, uh, paucity of cellular cementum on the roots of the permanent uh, teeth could be seen which makes the teeth very weak. Now numerous unerupted supernumerary tooth can be seen in the mandibular premolar or incisal area. So this is how you see over retained deciduous tooth could be seen as there is delayed eruption of the permanent tooth. So these are all the deciduous tooth which could be seen here which have not falled by time. Now what are the radiographic features that could be seen? First and the foremost important is that there will be white patent fontanelles in the patient. Also the suture, you cannot see the, uh, so see the open sutures like that. But obviously there would be some kind of defect in the crani uh, cranium region that could be seen. 
clavicles typically are reduced to a single or double fragment and the patient is able to bring both the shoulders to the midline as you saw in the picture before the patient is able to bring the shoulders to the midline okay other than that if you see there will be various anomalies in hands and feet which could be seen so this is how the skull looks like see you can see these uh, defects in the skull then there are some retained deciduous unerupted tooth which could be seen and here there is absence of collarbone the clavicle is absent here and so you see that the shoulder girdle is like this in normal conditions it's like this okay moving ahead to the treatment and prognosis see there is no specific treatment here because this is a congenital disorder you cannot put clavicle in the patient right so there is no specific treatment for this proper oral care should be done because oral care is something which is in our hand the unerupted tooth or the impacted could be extracted and if there is any other uh, problem that is there the treatment oral care could be taken permanent teeth do not have the potential to erupt so correct timing of surgical procedures to uncover the teeth and orthodontic repositioning is the best treatment that could be done life expectancy is normal there is no as such harm to the life of the patient but of course the abnormalities could be seen from aesthetic view so this was all about cranial dysplasia it's a very important topic in aspect to short note so if this video was useful to you share this with your friends also and let me know your comments in down below the box thank you so much